You! Are you going to Point Lookout? I need your help. My daughter stowed away on the Duchess Gambit a few weeks ago, and I've been worried sick ever since. I haven't heard anything from her, but if you're going there, could you look for her? Please, I'll do anything to help. Oh, bless you. Her name is Nadine, and she left a couple of weeks ago. Said she wanted to see the world. Silly little thing that she is. That Tobar said he dropped her off at Point Lookout, but who knows what's happened to her since then. I don't know if you can convince my little Nadine to come back, but just give her this note from me, would you? Only that it's where Tobar gets those punga fruits he sells off. Must be making a good profit off of them, too. I hear rumors the place is full of swamps and killer plants, but I don't know about all that. She's about your age, and when she left her hair was dyed bright orange, you shouldn't have any problem recognizing her. She told me she wanted to go find her fortune, but I thought it was too dangerous. I should have known better than to say that. Moment I told her she couldn't go, it was just a matter of time before she ran off. Please, find my daughter. Welcome, my friend. I am Tobar the Ferryman, and this fine vessel is the Duchess Gambit. We're just back from Point Lookout, but it won't be long before we set off again. Interested? You look like a man who's been around the waist, so I'll cut right to it. In Point Lookout, you'll find fresh-grown food, mysterious locales, and treasures as of yet unlooted. But keep your wits about you, because you'll find more than a few exotic critters and inhospitable locals. So stay here if you're not man enough. Ah, Nadine. Sprightly little tomboy with more curiosity than common sense, that one. <laughs> Caused so much trouble on the trip that I probably would have thrown her overboard <laughs> if she hadn't reminded me of myself at her age. I haven't seen her since we hit land at Point Lookout, but knowing her, I'll bet she's gotten herself in plenty of trouble. Down south, this side of the bay, there's a soggy strand of beach called Point Lookout. Oh, it's got it all! Ruins of ancient pleasure towns, mysterious swamps bristling with treasure, and all practically untouched by outsiders. But if you're curious, I could offer you a ride over to that faraway land. For a nominal fee, of course. And sorry, but I don't do group trips. If you want to see Point Lookout, you'll have to leave your friend here. Looking for fame and fortune? Hoping to cultivate the delicious... Once you've got a ticket, just head into the cabin and settle in on the cot. We'll be there in no time. And sorry, but I... Welcome to Point Lookout, my friend. The trip was fine. The weather's nice and damp, and everything out there looks pleasant as ever. Looks like nothing's changed since my last visit, except all that smoke I saw on the way in. 
Oh, nothing much. Just old Calvert Mansion. Just a huge abandoned estate teeming with who knows what opportunities for profitable scavenging. You know, nothing much. I know I said Point Lookout was perfect for treasure hunters, but it's a rare day when you get a beacon like that. Good travel. But you need to help me if you want to stay alive. They've been at it all night. I think they are just about to breach the inner walls. Follow me. I'm going to go check it out. Hey, over here. somewhere upstairs hurry follow me go through these doors and up the stairs find where they are coming in and stop them I'll be keeping an eye on the cameras down here hurry Thank <laughs> you. 
over there. Get him. Sleep forever. Job blocking off that hole. Hurry and get in here. Looks like they're about to breach from the east wing. One last way for them to get in. Follow me. Yeah. If you have any minds, now's the time to use them. They could come in through any of the boarded up doors at any second. Oh. 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 
So, my hero, think you came in and rescued me right in the nick of time? Not hardly. Had it all well in hand, and I didn't even need to use the failsafe. But that would have done a real number on some of the paintings, so just as well you were here. Anyway, name's Desmond. The type that kills everyone outside of my safe room and leaves a hell of a mess to clean up. Standard type. Not worth wasting on ignorant savages like them, honestly. Just as well you came along when you did. So, tell you what I'll do. I'll share a few tips for the next time you're making a dramatic final stand. Not a fucking clue. It'd be easy to chalk it up to their crazy religion. But if I'm right, and I always am, there's something else going on. That's the third attack in a month, so somebody's got a grudge with me. Whether it's a man or a god, I intend to set them straight. Damned if I know, it was abandoned when I got here. There's plenty hidden away here. None of it would be useful to a bunch of crazed inbreds. I've been around for a long goddamn time. The last time I knew a bird named Nadine, I still had skin. There was some girl who came nosing around here a few weeks back, but she ran off before I could... introduce myself. I'm here on my own business. You wouldn't understand it even if I tried to explain it to you. I don't know why anyone would bother with this shithole. It's filled with a bunch of disgusting inbreds and half-crazed loons. I'm gonna do what I came to do, and then get the fuck out of here. They're brainless morons who worship some crazy spirit. What's to know? Now hold on there. Not so fucking fast. You can be useful to me. I need someone willing to get their hands dirty. So here's the deal. I help you get in with those tribals. You help me get what I want, and I'll make you fucking rich. Just try not to sprain a lobe while you're thinking about it. My time is short. You need to learn to pay attention when I speak. Those mud lovers want me dead, and haven't extended the common fucking courtesy of telling me why. So, I need you to find a way into their commune, and figure out what's going through their addled little heads. Be a good pup, and old Desmond will give you a treat. And of course, who knows what riches they have for you to steal. Easy peasy. Right about now, they'll be wondering what happened to their hunting party. These are people who think cutting a hole in their skull can expand their mind. They're not exactly scholars over there. Just head up to the cathedral and ask real nice. When you're in, you'll find the bastard in charge and find out what they're up to. I just need information. No need for violence. Yet. They're brainless morons who worship some crazy spirit. What's to know? I've been around for a long goddamn... My story? Tell you what, kid. My story's a lot like a death claw's tongue. It's long, messy, and you don't want to get too personal with it. Understand? Suffice it to say, I have business in Point Lookout. If you help, you will be repaid for your efforts. That's all you want to fucking know.
lingers at the threshold of transcendence. What's this? A humble traveler, seeking the guidance of our awakened minds. Truly, this is a glorious day. You are from far away, and must be strong indeed to have traveled this far. But strength is nothing without the guidance of the enlightened mind. If you seek entry, you must be prepared to expand your consciousness. You must prove yourself worthy to transcend. You may not be so brave when you face the ritual of the Mother Seed. Stronger souls than you have attempted it, and lost their minds. Venture west to the Great Bog, and within you shall find the Mother of all Punga Fruit. She stands taller than a man, and her vines guide our future. Collect her seeds, and kneel before her wisdom. Only then will you be ready to enter these sacred halls.
no, no, don't, don't try and get up yet. You'll only hurt yourself. Truly, the Mother Panga has bestowed her wisdom upon you, and your mind has been expanded. That is merely the sensation of your consciousness rushing to embrace its true potential. It is the feeling of having no boundaries, no limits. Yea, though your body will bear the scars of the ritual, your soul shall be forever strengthened by the experience. You are now welcome in our cathedral. Enter, enlightened brother. We espouse the expansion of the perfect mind, and the rejection of the corrupt physical. The material world is destroyed and imperfect. We seek to release our minds from their tainted cages, so as to find a better world. Leader? That would be Jackson, a man of great wisdom. He has withdrawn to his cavern of communion, the better to contemplate the unknowable. Only the righteous are trusted to know where this nexus of understanding lies. And alas, I am not so blessed. Alas, only the worthy may enter his nexus of meditation. He has not seen fit to enlighten me. Our most enlightened one divined that the fates themselves did decree the mansion must be burnt to the ground. It is a gift from the earth itself, in acknowledgement of our perfect balance with nature and the higher planes. She recognizes that we seek to leave behind the corrupt physical, and she nurtures us in our quest. A moment, please. Rest a while. Pardon friend. me while I commune with the higher planes. Please wait. And Looks like another newbie in the tribe and still able to string together whole sentences. Ain't you the lucky one? You still remember your name? Math? How's your memory? When I came back, there were bits in my memory where all I could recall was a white light and a jumble of voices. Crazy, huh? But you're not drooling, so you're doing okay. The rest weren't so lucky when they got their heads cut open. You sure you're feeling okay in there? You might want to check your head for a scar. We all get them after going to that bog. You know, the last part of the ritual. After you pass out, they get a guy to bring you back, cut open your skull, and free your mind. As in, he rips out a bit of your brain. It's supposed to be the part that holds you back, but that doesn't always work out so good. Anyway, you look like a lively one, so welcome to the tribe. My name's Nadine.
off at his magical thinking cave, I guess. We're not allowed to know where it is. He says we're not enlightened enough to understand. I swear that sort of stuff pisses me off so much. I thought joining would be all drugs and magic, but it's just the same crap as everywhere else. Guess that's why I trailed Jackson to his stupid mystery cave. I only been here a week or so, but I'm about ready to ditch this bunch of dummies. I already stole all the punga I could ever need. Hey, if you still want to know where Jackson's hiding, I can help you out. No reason for me to give a damn about this place, you know? His cave's under the cathedral, but it's hard to find. Use this key to get in through a wrecked ship down at the sea cliffs to the east. You're a lucky one, and it probably didn't do any permanent damage. Scar will heal up on its own, and you'll be good as new. Of course, you'll still be missing a chunk of brain, but it looks like you didn't need that bit anyway. Now hold still, and I'll see if I can help you look like your old self again. It's all a little fuzzy for me, but I've got a hunch. I'm going to go do some snooping, see what I can figure out. Meet me by the riverboat in a day or so, and maybe I'll have something for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was all Jackson's crazy idea. I knew better than to volunteer for that suicide mission. Last time I wandered too close to that mansion, some old ghoul sicked his dogs on me. Screw that. What is this, a date? You start making a move and it's stabbing time. What? There's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Well, there's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Look, it's not that I don't want to go home or anything. I mean, I love my ma, even if she does make me want to claw my eyes out sometimes. It's just... I came out here to find a fortune, to make my mark, to be able to bring something with me when I do come back. If you see my mom again, let her know I'll be coming back, eventually, just not quite yet. Look, it's not that I don't want to go home or anything. I mean, I love my ma, even if she does make me want to claw my eyes out sometimes. It's just, I came out here to find a fortune, to make my mark, to be able to bring something with me when I do come back. If you see my mom again, let her know I'll be coming back, eventually, just not quite yet. Yeah, enough Gavin. Let's move. Till my meditations are complete. Be at peace. Escape. You infiltrated those tribals yet? Nice work. As if sneaking into a compound of morons is any kind of work. So, why haven't you tracked down their leader and grilled him for info? Don't waste your time reporting back. Go find him and figure out what he wants with this place, you moron. Back to business.
at last. Yes, Desmond will die, and our long struggle will finally end the only way it could have, with me as the victor! Yes, and you will be able to spread your knowledge across the astral plane for all those wise enough to accept it. No, not astral knowledge, you simpleton. Psychic domination! And that still won't be possible until you destroy Desmond's jamming device! No need to worry, Enlightened One. We shall reconsecrate the mansion and remove the impurities disrupting your perfect guidance. Yes, fine. Go destroy the house and its impurities. Just stop that jammer and I'll be free of you morons once and for all. Yes, we shall be free of all limitations. Thank you, Master. We shall be the instrument of your mighty will. Hello? You are... A fellow seeker of the higher planes, perhaps? What brings you here? What splendid news! At last, the Holy Land is empty of his disruptive aura, and the astral plane is open to us all. Oh, but the Transcendent Master will want to hear of this, and as the returning champion, it is your right and honor to tell him yourself. After all, it is he who makes all true decisions about the spiritual growth of our tribe, including the decision to cleanse the mansion. It is very rare that others are permitted to commune with the Master. Many are too foolish to understand the great truths of his higher mind. But I sense in you a great potential. Perhaps you have what is needed to accept his teachings and grow from his wisdom. He manifests here high on a ledge in the great sea caves well seek him out and all shall be revealed we are a family of dreamers a band of astral explorers and a church of the mind in time we will be free of the horrors of the base physical world we will play amongst the pure thoughts of the universe I know it may seem that I am a brave shepherd to my flock, but the truth is far more humble. I am nothing more than the largest fish in our school, as we swim through the astral seas, exploring, learning, and becoming one. But we are not swimming aimlessly. No, we have a beacon. The shining mind speaks to me in my meditations, and guides us always. We take no pleasure in violence. Our goal was merely to remove the ghoul. His presence is an offense to the Transcendent Master's astral dominion. I cannot claim to understand the exact reasons that the mansion's resident caused such disruption, however. To understand fully, ask the Master. Yes, commune with him while I see to my tribe. There is much to be done. So you're the mouse that was scurrying around here? Not much to look at, but at least you're not drooling all over yourself. I can work with that. Now then, perhaps you can be more useful than that simpering spiritualist and his tribe of idiots. What you are interacting with is merely a holographic projection, and a rather clumsy one at that, but it's all I can manage at the moment. As for myself, you gaze upon one of America's greatest minds, preserved through the miracles of science! Much more elegant than shambling on as some rotting corpse for all eternity, don't you agree? Jackson believes me to be some kind of god. You think that would be good, but his interpretations of my commands leave something to be desired. Regardless, I trust you can be more effective than he has been. I need your help on an important task. There's a troublesome ghoul who lives in Calvert Mansion. I need him destroyed and his jamming device neutralized immediately. More than you could possibly imagine with your squishy pink mind. But the only pressing matter at the moment is a device in his possession. He has a jammer that limits my projection range to this pathetic cave. Remove that and I can extend my reach so much further. Killing Desmond would be a nice plus. But I'm sure we can get around to that later. Desmond, that bag of bolts and bile will pay dearly for his trespasses. 
Were it not for his interference, I would still have a body. Still, its absence is only honed by brilliance, so perhaps I owe him my thanks. An appreciation I'll show in the form of a quick and messy death. <laughs> of course I did, but that moron thought it was one of his adult visions. The real goal was to destroy the ghoul's jamming device. Honestly, those fools aren't worth the meat they're made of. A minion that can't follow directions is no use at all. Yes, away with you! I knew that little bastard was behind all this. After all these years, he stuck his head out, and this is my chance to cut it off. Figuratively speaking, of course. Him. I should have known. My old rival, so close to his family home. Only he would be so stupid. He was once a man, Professor Calvert. The Calverts owned half of Maryland, back when there was a Maryland to own. Members of the Calvert family were influential all over the world. They practically owned a deed to the U.S. government. In their best days, there were no less than three Calvert family senators, seven members of the House, and two governors. They even had a top candidate for president, until that scandal with the dog forced them to drop out of the race. I was particularly proud of that one. Calvert is my old rival. Centuries we've played this game. I knew he'd be stupid enough to hide so close to his family home. It's not a matter of hate. It's a matter of destiny. He is my enemy, and I do not suffer any bastard who opposes me to live. I knew he was here. And it is my intent to find him, and call down a righteous fucking hammer on his head. Figurative, I mean. His head. Of course I fucking want you to do something else. You don't expect me to trot around this mud hole myself, do you? Nothing but the best for people who stay in my good graces. Now, you ready to stop whining and listen? So, those halfwits are getting messages from the professor, right? So he's off somewhere broadcasting to them. But without those buggers to do things for him, he can't do much for himself. So, we cut off his ability to talk to them, and he'll need to try harder. Maybe then I can find this squishy little worm and finish him off for good. If I know the professor, he's using a high-frequency cognitive sign broadcast. I have the perfect device to jam up that little worm's talk box. All you need to do is take it to the highest point around and install it. Easy, right? Right. Attach it to the bottom car, then turn it on and spin the jammer to the top. No fucking problem. I'll watch from here and turn it on. Then we'll see where our little professor is. Now, go!
It is I, Professor Calvert. Don't bother looking around. I am in your mind. But aren't you Desmond's faithful little employee? Coming to gum up my work, are we? Well, I have a better idea. How about instead of playing his game, you destroy that nasty little device? Deposit it in the nearby trash compactor and we will never have to worry about it again. I assure you that the gratitude of Professor Calvert is worth a great deal more than that of a washed-up old limey. You fool! What have you done? You will pay for this! Hey! No one betrays me! Do you understand? You will suffer for this! You will... Ooh. That bastard. He killed my pups. Nearly killed me. For what? He doesn't have the body to fucking do it himself. So he tried to blow me up. Me? Well, this ends today. Desmond Lockhart will finally win out. I know where he is. He overplayed his hand this time. You and me are going to walk in there and end this. Well, aren't you a fucking softy? But Calvert is here. He's got a lab under the lighthouse, the little fuck. Right under my nose the whole time. I found it when he boosted his signal to try to get through the jamming. When he sent those tribals to kill my poor pups. He's down there, hiding behind robots and machines, sucking life. Pathetic. He dies now. Now, that's more like it. Follow me. You're about to witness the end of an era.
All's well. He's just down this way. The world is rid of that sniveling, disgusting, arrogant brain. Think of it. Everything he learned, everything he had, it's all here, and it's all mine. Mine! Moron, you cannot possibly comprehend what this is worth. I've been battling with Calvert for over 200 years, and now at last, I am the victor. And now... 200 years of technology, knowledge, and research that he stole from me. Every time he beat me, it doesn't matter now. You're free to take whatever you find in this disgusting place. What I came for is of no interest to you. Enjoy your spoils. I don't think our paths will ever cross again. And I think we can both thank Christ and say hallelujah for that. the data that I can from Calvert's computers. Everything the little bastard gathered is here. And then, when I'm done, I'll leave this place to sink into the sea. Now that we're rid of Calvert, I'll be heading north to pursue my next rival. There are only a few of us left now. The great game goes on. Sort of a... Uh, what's a word you'd understand? Microcosm? Yeah. It's a microcosm for the old world. What's the difference between you and me, kid? The answer is tri- Stick by me.
You, you bastard, betray me, you fuck. You think you can betray me? You have one chance, exactly one chance to fucking redeem yourself in my eyes. We are going to go in there, and we are going to end this once and for fucking all. And you will help, or you will be my enemy. And you do not want to be my enemy. Well now, finally you show some goddamn sense. So, if you're on my side, why did you destroy my jammer? And you? Impressive. Very impressive. Perhaps there's more to you than meets the eye. I suppose I had you wrong, and that in itself is a once-in-a-lifetime event. Brace yourself, my friend. You're about to witness the end of an era. Exactly one chance to fucking redeem yourself in my eyes. We are going to go in there, and we are going to end this once and for fucking all. And you will help, or you will be my enemy. And you do not want to be my enemy. After 250 years, you think I'll go down to you. <laughs> Try it. Found it.
Well, for you, I have a very special gift. Death! Don't think of it as betrayal. No, no, no. Betrayal is for lesser men. Your use to me has simply expired. And now, I will dispose of you. <laughs> yes, let's. Robots, to me! Just in time. Found out who went rooting around in our skulls, and you'll never guess who it was. As a totally unrelated hint, I'm in charge of his boat now. Yeah, looks like it. When the tribals would send someone to the swamp, he'd be waiting around to nab them when the Pungaseeds gassed him. He'd do his amateur surgery for the tribals, and let us wander back, all in exchange for punga fruit to trade. <laughs> Sweet little deal he had going on. Anyway, I figured you'd want a shot at some revenge, so I put him under citizen's arrest, sorta. <laughs> Sounds pretty wacko, right? Well, I wouldn't have believed me either until I snuck a peek in Tobar's engine room. From the look of it, he kept every bit of gray matter he cut out and he had quite a collection. You can take a look if your stomach's up to it. And while you're in there, feel free to give Tobar my love, preferably with the sharp end of a hot knife. First off, I'm claiming this boat. I put Tobar down, so it's mine. Them's the rules of the ocean. So that leaves me with a boat, a load of punga, and a wicked scar. Damn, if I haven't earned that adventure I came out looking for. Think I'll take over running this ship. I can travel as I like and always head back to the wasteland to see Mom. Not a bad way to live, huh? Of course, you can always ride for free. Now that I've got this sweet boat, I guess I could head back home. For a while, anyway. Just wait till Mom sees the haul I'm bringing home. Well, if it isn't my favorite traveler, and oh, what a trip you were on. Why, when you were under, you should have heard some of the things that came out of your mouth. But I suppose you're more interested in what came out of your head, aren't you? Why do we do anything? You travel the world, kill people, take trophies that interest you, and move on. I'm much the same. The only difference is that my trophies are somewhat more medical in nature. Oh, and to be honest, I probably kill fewer people than you do. But I suppose it's time that came to an end. One way or another. Look what we have here. Uh, oh!
enough, Gavin. Let's move. Oh, you're back. Yes, thank you so much. And now that she's got this boat and carrying all this cargo, well, I can afford to actually pay you. Thank you so much. We having fun yet? Well, there's not...